are tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey, AfterBuzzers. Welcome to a brand new Spotlight On. I'm your host, Yael Teagle. Today, we have an amazing woman here. We have Kristen Gerhardt. Kristen, you are amazing. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if you are aware of this. I uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe I am. But we don't have to talk about the amazingness. We do. We do. That's what we're here for, to talk about you and your amazing life and your amazing story and what you do. You are known for Wizard Wars on sci-fi. Yes. You are a judge there. I am. I guess the, the official term is magic critic. Oh. Which is, I know, it sounds so ridiculously official, doesn't it? Yeah. Magic critic. I don't. It doesn't exist until now because of me. It's pretty nice. awesome. I... I want to be a something critic that, do is, it. that isn't yeah. already there. <laughs> Create it. Yes. Just do it. I want to be a Doctor Who critic. Oh, my gosh. You could totally do that. We could together. Together? We could team yes. up? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, the best idea. <laughs> well, you not only are known for your magic, but you also are huge in the science world. I don't know if I'm huge in the you science world. You are huge world. in the science world. I'm in the science world. That is amazing. <laughs> I, I like to say you are the female Wallowitz, only oh not awkward at all. Yeah, no, I don't have the belt buckle collection he or has. Or the, like, the... Um, right, the Dickey collection yeah. either. Yeah. Uh, I should probably yeah. learn to wear those and rock them normally. Like, I could wear one with this dress, and it would probably tie the whole thing together really It would nicely. be amazing. So, yeah, and the bat, bat, Batman belt buckle. Oh, the things <laughs> I could do with that. Well, so I want to talk... I want to start talking about you and science. You sure. were a, a researcher at NASA. No, I was. Yeah. So, yeah, I worked at JPL for a few years back, a few years ago. Uh, now I work at Mount Wilson Observatory as a telescope operator on the 60-inch telescope. How did you get into science? That sounds like such a weird question, but it's no, so rare <laughs> to have a woman who's in science. It sounds rare, there, there, but there are quite a few of us. I think it's just people don't necessarily associate that first. They don't, they don't usually associate science with women in science. Um, I kind of got into it by, when I was about 15, I heard that the local community college just down the street from me had astronomy classes. and I would always loved astronomy, but I always thought there was too much math and I wouldn't be any good at it but I just when I was in high school I, I was kind of a I hate to say it, I was such an overachiever that I had to do more and more and more all the time so I took these these astronomy classes at my high school and just fell in love with it and started tutoring astronomy and TAing the labs and just fully got into run helping out with the planetarium and when I was 18 my professor at that college uh, put my resume forward for an undergraduate research program at JPO and I got picked and I Worked a couple projects for them, so that's so amazing. You say it like it's like it's no big deal. Well, I, it was, like it happens every day. <laughs> it can happen every day. It totally can. It just was a it was a pretty unique kind of situation for me, I guess. Well, how did you? I want to know how you went from this amazing science to magic. Where did your love of magic come from? That came a lot earlier. I was about nine, and I saw World's Greatest Magic. And if you remember that series on TV, it was mm -hmm. kind of like early 2000s. And I saw a bunch of magicians like Lance Burton and the Mac King and the Pendragons, and they performed on, on this show, and I thought it was so spectacular and so wonderful. And I just had to do it. There's no way I could not do magic. And it took me a few years to kind of figure it out, figure out, you know, how I could do it and learn magic and all that. So it didn't really happen for me until I was about 15. And I joined the Magic Castle Junior Program, which I know most people don't know that exists. No, not at all. So for the Magic Castle, most of the time you have to be over 21 to be a member. Mm -hmm. But they have a junior program for all of us under 21 or all of them under 21 who want to still do magic and be associated with the castle. So I joined that. And it's a really unique group of spectacularly talented individuals. Um, and it, it was such a learning experience and really fun. And I had, ended up taking a break from magic to do to work for NASA for a few years. And then I kind of went back to it once I uh, got up to Matt Wilson instead, because Matt Wilson's schedule is a little bit easier than my previous uh, astronomy observing schedule was. So you, you spend your full-time uh, magic, science, and hosting. 
Y yes. That mostly. is your life. Yeah, pretty pretty much. That is the most amazing. I keep saying amazing. I'm amazed. <laughs> I'm amazed. Thank you. Um, that is just, that sounds like you can do everything and anything you want. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm terrible. I have no balance. I can't ride a unicycle for to save my life. Do you do you want to ride? I would love to learn how to ride a we unicycle. We're going to get you Can on you a unicycle. Let us do this. Yes. I don't know if I just have I cannot balance on anything to save my life. Like I can't even stand on one foot and hold my balance. Like Wait, that's how bad it is. That's that is an unnecessary <laughs> skill. I'm gonna be honest. Balance I, I on think one it's, foot. <laughs> I think it's very necessary. Like if you're putting if you have a heel on and you're trying to put the other heel on. You sit down. That's true. <laughs> that's true. But I, I, I've seen, I wouldn't necessarily think to do that. That's what smart people do, right? No. No. I the, have to do it the hard way. I have to, to balance on one foot. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I want to talk about um, the show. Sure. About Wizard Wars. Yes. Um, and season two is about to begin production, or soon should be? We do not have any set mm. anything on season two yet. Ah, well. So, so we have the six episodes that we shot, and the yes. season finale actually airs tonight, so Tuesday. Ooh. Yeah, pretty cool. And you'll be live tweeting the finale tonight. I will tonight. be so live tweeting. Excellent. <laughs> Any uh, spoiler, not real spoilers, but like anything you can tease us about tonight? Um, I will say, I don't know if this is how much of a spoiler this is, there is a, one of the competitors on the show has a very unique skill of uh, being able to enter, like a... Uh, and do impressions, and you should definitely stay tuned to the very end to see how he incorporates that into their act. Interesting. It's spectacular. That sounds very exciting. Yes. All right. So tune in tonight and stay till the very end. The whole yeah. Don't don't just half-ass it and watch it just <laughs> yeah. the first half and then be like, eh. no, you got to stay to the very end. It's well, really. I worth feel like on a finale you have to stay to the very end. I feel anyway. like on every show you have to yeah. stay to the end. But especially a finale. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, so I know you're also a Whovian. Oh, and a, a big old nerd. Oh, the biggest. What are your other uh, fandoms and obsessions? Oh gosh, where do I start? Um, start I'm with Who? <laughs> yes, Doctor Who is a big, a big thing of mine. I actually just shot, shot a magic video where I utilize a sonic screwdriver, Matt Smith's sonic screwdriver to be ah. specific. So that's going to come out on my Bitchcraft YouTube channel in about a week. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm a huge Trekkie. My mom's a Trekkie, so I'm a second generation <laughs> Trekkie. That's awesome. It's pretty awesome. So I grew up on Next Generation and Voyager and kind of the whole the whole thing there. Um, I love my Xbox probably more than words can describe. It's a huge part of my life, which is unfortunate. Uh, it's I love important. all all <laughs> all gaming ever. Um, comics, you know, just kind of the I don't even know where to start. It's kind of like yeah. how do you describe your nerd? You're like ah. Uh, everything it's it's amazing i love a well-rounded nerd oh you got you well yeah. i i feel like everyone has their own version of nerd and whatever your version is totally cool yeah. you just got to fully nerd out on it yeah commit to your nerd i feel like there are little girls everywhere watching this and they're just getting so inspired by oh. your story by what you do and everything um, is there any message you want to give to any little girls who are thinking they want to go into science or magic or nerddom, which we welcome them into oh, all of them? With open, open arms. Yeah. I, yeah. I think the best thing that I can say for anybody who wants to just try something is don't be too afraid to try it. Always try it. You know, the same thing with astronomy when I was younger. I was like, oh, there's too much math. Oh, there's too much this. Oh, I don't know if I'll be any good at it. Give it a try. If you find out that you are good at it, great. If you find out that, oh, maybe that's not for me, at least you tried it and now you know. So always try. <laughs> Excellent. I think that is an amazing message. Cool. It is a wonderful message. Um, I want to go back a little bit yes. uh, to your science, to NASA, to astronomy. Cool. What is it, do you think that when you were thinking astronomy sounds interesting, what do you think it was that really pulled you? I think it probably was my, I think it was probably the Star Trek, like growing up with that kind of that sci-fi vein, you know, always seeing, you know, explorers out in space, kind of like discovering the final frontier and exploring planets and meeting new new species and this whole kind of exploration of, and wonder, that kind of made a big impression on me growing up. And I just loved that whole kind of fantasy of what's out there. And thinking about astronomy as I as I got older, it was like, well, we we don't know barely anything about the universe. There's so many more questions than we have answers, and even the answers we have aren't they're always changing. There's so much we're learning, and I love the idea that there's so much unknown, and there's so much to discover. And that was a huge kind of a 
a realization for me growing up. And did you do any astronaut training? Are you going to go oh out and gosh. just explore? So, yeah, I went to astronaut training camp when I was in fourth grade. Not astronaut training camp, but astro camp. Have you ever done those like class trips when you're when you're little in elementary school? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the best. We built rockets and we got to go on the what was the gyroscope thing where they strap you in and they mm -hmm. spin you around until you puke. It was the coolest thing ever. I would love to go back. I'd love to go. Yeah, just do, do science do camp again. All all science camp all the time. Yeah. Please someone put me as an astronaut on, out in space. Just let's just do it. Yeah. Let's make this a thing. If Wallowitz could do it, you could do it. <laughs> I feel like I'm Ethan Hawke and Gattaca though. I feel like they're going to be like not you. Oh. And I would, yeah, I would cry. That would make me so sad. It's a great movie, though. Also, great reference. Yeah. <laughs> no one makes Gattaca references anymore. No, Gosh. they don't. Always remember Ethan Hawke. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about the show. How did you get involved with the show? With Wizard Wars. Mm -hmm. uh, so I work for a magic company called Theory 11. And through Theory 11, we have a lot of what are called artists. They're just magicians that we work with. We put out downloads, DVDs, different things, different products with them and their particular brand of magic. And one of our artists is Rick Lax, who is the executive producer of Wizard Wars. So he actually created the show along with Justin Flom uh, in their apartment. And they have the original, original YouTube video out of that. It's a pretty spectacular watch if you have the time. You can go search the original Wizard Wars on YouTube. And I met Rick uh, through Theory 11, and we kind of got to talking, and he told me about his idea and, and said, would you like to be part of it? And I said, of course I would, and that sounds amazing. <laughs> that is that is the way to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's great to support your friends, and it's been really spectacular to see their idea grow. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I get to be on this show with people I love dearly, like just wonderful friends of mine and people that I, I can't wait to see their success just explode. And it's, it's fantastic. I love it. And you get to work with Penn and Teller. Oh, that's the that's so cool. I know. Sitting next to Penn and Teller, it's it's both completely nerve wracking and absolutely stimulating at the same time. Like, I always feel like I'm going to say something just stupid, and that they're going to kind of be like, oh, "What is this little girl doing here?" But it's just to hear them talk and hear their ideas and hear kind of how they view magic. It's I'm learning so much, and it's some of the most stimulating magic conversation I've ever been a part of. I love that <laughs> sentence in itself. <laughs> it's kind of a, a strange sentence to It's yeah, a, it's to a utter. great sentence. And I think I think there are people out there who need who need to be told that magic is is loved and welcomed and and nothing no. to be ashamed of and that they should do uh, it. Yeah, magic is fantastic. Yeah. You should never be ashamed of magic. Whatever your magic is, you yeah. know, do your thing. The cool thing about magic is you can really make it your own. There are magicians out there kind of doing so many different just completely out of the box things in magic and that's what it, you should be doing. You can always push the envelope and I love to see people who take magic and just take it to a whole other level where you wouldn't even have thought that it could go. I love that. That's really exciting, and I think it's one of the, it's a great field to just push the envelope and go crazy. It's fabulous. Awesome. Um, are there any fun stories from the set that you want to share from being on the show? And then fun stories from the I set. Mean, There's I mean, I imagine. Lot of fun stories I just imagine you're surrounded by magicians. I know. It's it, well. I love being surrounded by magicians. <laughs> I, everyone. The cool thing about it is everyone on the show are they're just dear friends. So when we're not filming, we're kind of wreaking havoc and, and playing around together and it's it's so much fun um i remember uh, during during filming we you always uh we come in we come in early kind of in our in our jammies when not before we you know really get into wardrobe and everything and i would always have to wear my nerdiest shirts because the crew would always put their nerdy shirts on and mm -hmm. we'd like we try to coordinate so i remember <laughs> one day i came in my batman shirt and there were like three other guys on crew wearing the exact same batman shirt and i knew it was going to be a real good day. Yeah, that sounds like <laughs> the best day. That's yeah. It's, <laughs> you can't go wrong when you put Batman on. You can't go wrong. So you mentioned a little bit about Bitchcraft. Tell us a little bit yes. about that. Bitchcraft is a show that I do with my my friend Ed and Dranger, who's a stand-up comedian. It's uh, kind of female magic. It's kind of fun and silly and ridiculous, and it's just completely out of the box. It's 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 very silly, but it's really cool because we build our own magic. They're original magic ideas, and we get to really set the stage for exactly you know the kind of scenario we like. And it's they're so much fun, and they're just goofy. And I hope people enjoy them because we we love filming them. 
And they're available on, on YouTube. YouTube under Bitchcraft. Yeah. With a K. Okay. With B I T C H K R A F T. Good noted. Crafty, right? Yeah. Yeah. See? <laughs> puns. Yes. Oh, you punster. So, oh, so punny. <laughs> so punny. But yeah, I love the idea of just just having fun with magic and that this is the kind of magic that I've always wanted to do and it's great to bring another female in so it's kind of empowering and it's just fun to hang out with your best friend and do magic yeah and it's just great you've done you've accomplished so much and you are so young I'm not that young you're very young <laughs> what what do you have uh what are you looking forward to what's your next project oh I, I'm gonna do everything absolutely everything. <laughs> I believe it <laughs> I, I don't doubt that in the least I, I love the idea of just not necessarily knowing. Bitchcraft's going to continue, and that's going to be a thing. Um, hopefully, season two for Wizard Wars. We'll see if that becomes a thing. If not, hopefully just more magic. And uh, we're definitely more astronomy. Matt Wilson is going to open the 100-inch telescope pretty soon. There's there's the 60-inch and the 100-inch up at Matt Wilson. Right now, the 60 is available for public rental, and the 100-inch will be available for public rental fairly soon. So everyone's going to want to get on that because it's spectacular. That's awesome. Yes. Well, why don't you tell the people at home where they can find you on Twitter and Instagram and all that good stuff. I am stuff. at Kristen Gerhart on everything. Awesome. And yes. your YouTube as well. Uh, my YouTube's Bitchcraft. Bitchcraft. Yes. With a K. With a K. Awesome. With a K. Well, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you. Thank you for talking to us about We're everything you're doing. We're going to get on some doing. Doctor Who after this. Oh, yeah. We um, are going to. A lot of Doctor Who. Yeah. We're going to go nerd out. Yeah. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, and, of course, people can find me online at yell.tv. That's Y-A-E-L dot TV. And there you'll find information about the beautiful stylings from Sirens Boudoir. Uh, also, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Google Plus at Yell Teagle. That's Y-A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. That's the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.